Tonight on Coyote Sports, the soccer and volleyball teams just can't seem to lose and find out the obstacle the swimming team is having to overcome. I'm Charlie Daldorf. And I'm Michaela Feldman. Find out how the men's and women's cross country teams did in Brookings. And sports commentator Grant Boziaki discusses something that consumes hours of football, fa football fans' team every day, every week, fantasy football. First, the headlines. Delaney? A tentative trial date is set for Adrian Peterson for his charge of child abuse. The trial date has been set for December 1st. However, his trial might be moved up in hopes of getting Peterson back on the field sooner. Peterson was placed on the NFL exempt list in September after abusing his four-year-old son. ESPN and TNT announced they will continue to show NBA games for the next nine years. The new deal will start with the 2016-17 season and will increase ESPN's television, digital, highlights, data, audio, and international NBA rights. The announcement was made Monday by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver and ESPN President John Skipper. The deal's value is over $2 billion per year. The St. Louis Cardinals and San Francisco Giants advanced to the National League Championship Series, joining the Kansas City Royals and the Baltimore Orioles from the American League as the final teams remaining in the MLB. The championship games will be Friday and Saturday, with the winners facing each other in the World Series starting on the 20th. And those are your headlines. Ryan Sager and the football team were unable to capitalize with a win off their bye week this past weekend. The Coyotes were on the road against Southern Illinois. The game was tied at 10 at halftime, but the second half was all Southern Illinois. The Coyotes couldn't get anything going and would go on to fall 41-10. The Salukis outgained the Yotes by 206 yards in the game. Eric Schuford led the team in receiving with 65 yards. Against UNI this Saturday, USD's starting quarterback, Kevin Earle, will return after starting uh, sitting out the past four games from a thumb injury against Oregon. The D-Day's game will air on ESPN3. With their conference win over IPFW on Sunday, the USD women's soccer team improves to 8-4-1 and four and one overall. This is the most wins by any team in the Summit League so far this season. Goalkeeper Mackenzie Victor was named Summit League Defensive Player of the Week after recording two shutouts this past weekend. She had 10 saves on the weekend, and USD has now had eight shutout victories, including one tie. USD will play at Oral Roberts on Friday before hosting North Dakota State on Sunday. The ninth-ranked USD women's cross-country team plays second behind third-ranked Minnesota at the SDSU Classic. They were led by a fourth-place finish by Amber Eichhorn and a fifth-place finish by Kitty Whitestein. The 12th-ranked men's team plays third behind NDSU and SDSU. The men were led by senior Brent Hayes with a second-place finish. The teams will run in the Dakota Days 5K Fun Run at 4 on Friday. The women's tennis team battled the cold Saturday as they hosted the USD Coyote Invitational, where four USD players finished with 2-1 and one records. Alice Scott and Samwana Bidakarol won their first matches, and Nina Barutsik and Malika Pavlovich won their first match six sets to two. Scott finished first in her flight, while Dragana Brankovic and Pavlovich finished second in theirs. Interim coach Dan Hansen is coaching the team until a permanent coach is hired. This was the Coyotes' final competition of the fall season. They will continue on the road in mid-January. The USD swimming and diving team started their season with some adversity. A broken pump in the pool left the teams with no option but to begin their seasons with a few leaks on land. Although the teams are now back in the pool, junior Maggie Smith says the broken pump came at a tough time. So we're just getting kind of back into shape and back into the routine of things. So it kind of just changed it up a little bit, not being able to be in the pool and just being on land, which is weird to say. Head coach Jason Mahold isn't worried about the broken pool affecting his team. We've got a strong, resilient group of kids that uh, will bounce back just fine. And um, if this week's any indication, I think we're going to be just fine. Mahold says land workouts are just as beneficial for the swimmers. Uh, we're really dominating our chest and arms. Um, you know, the dry line workout gives us a chance to focus on our legs, uh, back, and some of our weak areas and kind of just make us an overall better athlete. The Coyotes will host Minnesota State Mankato on Friday at the Dakota Dome. 
Kendall Crittenbrink notched 14 kills on Sunday as the Coyote volleyball team won its fifth straight match in a 3-0 sweep against Fort Wayne. Riley Howard was named Summit League Defensive Player of the Week for the second time this season. She recorded 60 digs during the week in matches against Omaha, IUPUI, and IPFW. The Coyotes are now 11-6 on the season and 5-0 in conference play. With the wins, they jumped to 56th in the RPI polls, their highest ranking ever. The USD will host Southwestern Illinois on Friday before traveling to Denver on Sunday. In this week's sports commentary, Grant Boziaki shares some of his fantasy football expertise. Fantasy football, can't go without it, right? Hopefully everyone out there is remaining patient as we're in the meat grinder portion of the season. Bye weeks are in full swing and injuries are always inevitable. Hopefully this past week you didn't go up against Steven Gostkowski and his 21 fantasy points for a kicker, I must add, because I know I did. Hashtag fantasy life. Despite my two and three record, thanks Monty Ball, I'm, pe I'm keeping my head held up high. Now moving on to this week's advice, because that's what I'm here for, right? If they're not already picked up in your league, two of the hottest pickups hail from the New York football giants. Andre Williams and Odell Beckham Jr., both rookies, have some major appeal. Williams is going to get a lot of carries, and this week he's going up against the disastrous Eagle defense. While Beckham is someone you might have to be a little more patient with, but he could pay major dividends when your star receiver hits his bye week later on in the year. He was drafted 12th overall and now finally healthy. You better believe the G-men will feed him the pigskin. Two other wide receiver notes. Don't sweat Kelvin Benjamin's lackluster outing last week in Chicago. He's going to continue being a great value pick for your fantasy team. And lastly, one of my deep sleepers heading into this year was Rams wide receiver Brian Quick. He's been solid, don't get me wrong, but with that being said, he might be a guy you should try to, look, try to look to trade with his value currently where it's at. Remember, he plays in the NFC West and has yet to face Richard Sherman or Patrick Peterson yet this year. So, just worth mentioning. For Coyote Sports, I'm Grant Boziaki.